This story from our gospel, from the gospel of Luke, is very nearly a tragedy. It ends in joy only because Jesus takes the time to change the course of the narrative, but it begins in tragedy. And what's tragic is not the series of events that has led Cleopas and companion to leave Jerusalem. What's tragic is that it appears that they don't even want to believe these two disciples. They know that some women claim that he was raised. They acknowledge that the story checked out and that others went and saw the empty tomb. And yet here they are, walking away from Jerusalem on the road to nowhere. It's almost incomprehensible. Why would they walk away? If they really believed in him, if they had staked their lives on him, then, then why walk away when there is evidence that he has accomplished what he promised? Why does it all end for them in that, that desperate phrase, we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel? Why despair when there is evidence for hope? Jesus highlights this disconnect when he says how slow of heart you are to believe how slow of heart you are to believe they may have had hope but it's as though their hope was was disconnected from their hearts from the bond of love it's like saying you know i hope it's sunny tomorrow and if it turns out to be sunny that's great but if it doesn't you know you get over it you move on you do other things with your life it's disconnected from the heart. It's like a disinterested hope. But if you love someone, I mean, if you really love someone and you're going to a, to a party where it's possible, maybe not likely, but possible, that that person just might show up. That at any moment, any moment, the one you love could walk through the door and you could see their face and you could hear their voice. And you could embrace them because of the surprising gift of their presence in that place. If you really love them, if you desperately love them, you would, you would watch for them and you would wait. And not back in the corner of the room where they might, you know, poke their head into the party and, and disappear after a moment's notice. No, you would wait by the door. And you would, you, would, you would get a view of the sidewalk so that you could see them walking up so that at the very moment you caught a glimpse of them, you could go running like the, like the prodigal father who waits for his son, who runs to him. You would wait like this. If you really loved this person, you would wait for them in this way. Until the last second, you would wait at that party. The very last second, until the last guest left, you would wait by the door, hoping against hope that the person might show up at the very last minute. You would wait. You would wait because that hope is full of a love that desperately wants to be fulfilled. This is the hope that we are called to as Christians, a hope united with love in such a strong way that it, it's not disinterested. It's not that we say, oh, well, he didn't show up. It's okay. I'll move on with my life. No. For us who are Christians, he is everything to us. And so for these disciples to give up on hope so easily, when there is evidence that he is risen, is an absolute tragedy. And it's all the more beautiful then that Jesus doesn't leave them in their despair. He doesn't slap them in the face. He doesn't condemn them for walking away from it all so quickly. Instead, in a, in a very kind of casual way, like talking with a friend on a walk through the neighborhood, he reawakens their memory of all that was said of him and how all of it was fulfilled. It's a bit like marriage counseling, really, when a couple is struggling, they have to rediscover the memory of love that, that's gotten lost in difficult times. Jesus wants these disciples to remember why they began to believe to begin with. 
why they had hope to begin with, precisely to awaken their hearts again. And we know it works. We know this method of Jesus works. Because at the end, by the end of the walk, they respond to him as a lover would respond. When Jesus is giving a sign that he's going to keep on walking, they urge him, stay with us. These are the words of someone who has the fire of love in their hearts. Stay with us. Stay with us, for evening draws near. We want you with us. Every one of us has to walk this path of memory of rediscovering a real affection, a real love and tenderness for Jesus. We need more than a disinterested hope that we could take or leave, depending on what he offers. This is a good story for us to hear now, a good passage for us to reflect on in our own lives during this week. Because we've not yet arrived at the point where, as a community of faith, we can gather together in person and break bread in the Eucharist. We're, we're not there yet. We're not at the end of this path. We're walking now. And maybe it's a longer walk than we would prefer. But let's use this time of walking as we hope for a time when we can join together and break bread in communion. Together now, let's walk. Let's walk and listen to the voice of the Lord speaking to us. Read the scripture. Spend time in prayer. Spend time in silence. Spend time walking. Listen to the voice of Jesus. He has such a desire to reconnect our hope with our love. Let's pray that as we celebrate uh, this uh, Eucharist today, that in our prayer, the Lord might strengthen our affection for him, that he might strengthen our hope, and that we might eagerly await his arrival and rejoice when he comes.